The bottle is half full, so there is... Uh... Oh, you optimist. <laughs> yeah, 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 always. <laughs> At that point, it's always half empty for me. <laughs> I thought the, the way to think about it is what you were doing with the glass or bottle. Are you emptying it or filling it? Then it's half full if you're filling it or half empty if you're emptying it. So I don't know if he's making wine or... You can't drink wine and fill it at the same time. From another no, bottle. Un- unless you're Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I mean, it's, statistic- <laughs> it's statistically possible, well, not being Jesus, but uh, <laughs> I mean, that I'm actually filling a wine bottle, but uh, the higher chance is that I'm actually emptying it, yeah. So my watch later list on YouTube is down to 88 videos, which is really wow. <laughs> double digits. That's yeah, it's, it's been a long time since, since it was double digits. And that <laughs> means I've been going through old videos as well. And I came uh, about a wormhole table by Oliver Gomez. I don't know if you've seen that one. Uh, wormhole table? That sounds... Yes. Um... I'll Weird send book. a link in to the YouTube video, and that it it will be a link in the description of the uh, episode as well. Uh, just considering, uh, because la- last episode we talked about lathes and talked about lathes a lot, and this is kind of pushing what you can do on a lathe. I think, at least the lathe he's using. Uh, I like his workshop already. <laughs> Feels and very I mean, much uh, my size. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! And making something like that, I feel like I I could never get get myself the. I mean, that's it's too much work. I don't want to do all that work. <laughs> too much work and too much thinking. <laughs> yes, it's a lot of thinking and a lot of material and a lot of a lot of everything and. I would be afraid to put that thing on a lathe as well. I, I just jumped in at the middle and that, that's a lot of sanding and there's a lot of work before you get to chuck it into the lathe and then you're probably going to break it and then you have spent like 50 hours <laughs> up to that point. Yeah. I just clicked the link and it started playing in my ear so I actually don't know what you said. So <laughs> I, I quickly clicked off it and I don't, I've not seen it. <laughs> yeah, at least you, you've seen the, the image of it. Uh, Nope. <laughs> All right, he got 5.91 million views on that video, and that is deserved. Deserved. I, I'm looking at the final results now, and that is f- fucking amazing. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing, and at the same time, I mean, scary. And it's that someone has to patience actually do that sort of thing. <laughs> I feel like I don't really belong on YouTube when. Other people are doing stuff like that. Yeah, don't. don't well, so, someone fell into the the cauldron as a kid, and uh... <laughs> quite possibly. Is that even a saying in English? I have to Google that. Oh, I've seen that. That's fantastic. That table. Yeah, I've seen that one before. I mean, it it, it probably sucks pretty bad as a table, but as an art piece, it's really great. Yeah, I mean, you, really imagine nice. you're putting your drink a little too close to the edge, and it's a whoop going down in the black I hole. Would, and... I would be forever just spinning marbles around in that. Yes, yeah, that's and that's I would keep it. And then you have to hours. lift the table and find <laughs> yeah. like a, All right, that's, a dozen that's, marbles under. That's two things. Of course, I would also have to make coasters, and then I would be. Like screaming at the kids nonstop, don't go near the table. I mean, putting that much work into a table that it, I could not have it in house. And no, that's when not you, I thought said... you were worried that we're going to dis- disappear down the wormhole, it's, <laughs> yeah. wormhole. Yeah. it's not real. <laughs> but on the other hand, instead of that wormhole table, I would much rather have a table with that that half part where you just you put a coin in a slit and it just goes down the ridge before it goes down. You see it at the yeah. airport and so on. Those are yeah. really cool. Oh, yeah, I could have one of those. <laughs> Get all your savings in it. <laughs> <laughs> the lathe fund table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's, if you have a transparent uh, a leg at the middle, so you can see how how much money is in there, and you just have a the vacation <laughs> savings or something like that. <laughs> You'd be better off having the hacker table, wouldn't you, where people come round and they put their phones on because inevitably they've got their card in their phone wallet, haven't they? Ah, <laughs> and it and it just nicks a bit of money from it. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? I'm not sure if I like the way your mind works or if I'm a bit scared. Because <laughs> that's brilliant. You just you just have tap to pay for like a tenner or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. You make a table. You make a table and then you bring it to Maker Central and then just people put their yes. phone down for something. Free charging. And then like, ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it yeah. charges free you. Charging. It charges you for oh, free. To, to, to make it <laughs> to make it legal, just put a pile of stickers on the table so when the he stole them ten pound. No, you took one of my stickers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Look into that. See what uh, one of those uh, uh, <laughs> things cost. Those card reading machines aren't much actually. <laughs> get, it's pure evil. <laughs> get, you know, get them I've off seen, Amazon. I've seen uh, I've seen some of these videos, and they are scary. What how easy it is to to catch data in transit and uh, of course we I work in a large engineering firm and cybersecurity are on the ball every day they're trying to send phishing emails internally to make people aware and so on so if you catch a phishing email and you report it you get like oh yay you did great and whatever and then i just there there is a lot of like uh 15 minutes of cybersecurity every now and then and like you know, you have to focus on this you have to use your vpn and don't do this and log on to open networks and so on and then what i realized and that nothing is talked about is that almost everyone in the office they're using a wireless keyboard and a mouse which operates on bluetooth so <laughs> if someone sits outside of our office at 10 at 10 before 8 in the morning when everyone comes into job or right, they, they use their mouse and they click log on and then they type the password that's the first one they do and it's bluetooth so it's very easy to intercept that so they can sit out there and just log everything that is sent from every keyboard on bluetooth on the entire premises and then just all right we have now gathered data for the first 10 minutes after eight o'clock. And most likely that is all the passwords of everyone <laughs> working in this. <laughs> so it's very easy to then just, all right, I have all the passwords. Now I just need to find usernames. And that is basically easy maths. I mean, it's your first name, last name at the company.com. <laughs> so, most likely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's my, this is so dumb. And I just brought that up in one of those safety meetings. But I mean, yeah, if we do all this, I mean, it's, it sounds safe enough, but you're writing your password on a keyboard who's sending it over Bluetooth and you can just see the cybersecurity people like going stone cold, like, <gasps> we didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I, I think my boss had a very pragmatic view on it. I mean, if someone really wants to get in they will get in. Uh, I mean, it's even funny how to see how they can actually socially engineer their way in. I mean, they're they're calling someone and they have a, a recording in the background of a crying baby and someone calls the bank. I'm trying to access the funds of my uh, husband. He's out. The baby's crying. I need something. And you just put enough stress on the guy on the other end and you have enough reliable information but which you have just gathered from social media and so on you can trick almost everyone who is not professionally trained to just no i'm not giving out anything so it's really fun to watch so i'd hear the crying baby and nope i'm hanging up i can't deal with that noise. <laughs> <laughs> you should work in security nope nope not doing this no nope, goodbye <laughs> <Doot>. <laughs> So uh, Arne Mangasusran had a bit of a funny fantasy yesterday, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, this is this is quarter pint territory, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> so his request was that we set up an only 
fans page. Is that correct? I read it right, didn't I? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean... I'm not sure if it's for the... We should have uh, each one our own or one uh, together for the podcast, perhaps. I think it was all, all of those options I think you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to know how much money is there in it for us. <laughs> is, it worth, is it worth a while? That is... I mean, I'm more expensive. That's the nitty-gritty <laughs> of it. I mean, for, for enough money, I, I, can do, I can do a lot. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of scruples. So <laughs> I can't do a lot, but I'm willing to try. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's me as well. <laughs> Just have to clear it with the wife first. <laughs> yeah, everybody has their price there, don't they? <laughs> oh, is that one of your new projects? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> You're always putting yourself out there. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of uh, giving money online, I did a Patreon purge. Just a couple of weeks ago, and now I'm considering if I should do another one as well. Uh, just... Bye, her bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just watch how I'm quietly sitting in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's good to uh, to check out where, where your money is going and what you're what you're really supporting and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Who'd you drop this time? Uh, I'm not going to go into specifics. <laughs> Didn't work last it time. Was, it, Didn't it was a couple. This... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you make it sound like it's a power fantasy of just playing God and like, nope, <laughs> nope. I think like, that's maybe how you are yeah. working in the in the garden. Just I'm killing you and I'm killing you. You get to live. No, I'm killing you as well. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> God it's Glenn is stomping <laughs> through the garden. It's worked so far, KJ. <laughs> we have gotten to situations in, um, in some of the better gardens before where, you know, you've got a lot of run-of-the-mill plants and then we get nicer, rarer plants come into the garden and then you have to make choices on which of the run-of-the-mill one gets to bite the dust. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> been a little plant god <laughs> yeah I, I did that this weekend as well we we spent it our uh, at our wife's family's cabin and uh i went on a stroll with the youngest and i realized oh there's a lot of small oak trees here uh, out in the uh, forest and next time i'm bringing my trailer and a shovel so i'm bringing <laughs> uh home more <laughs> more trees <laughs> for the garden I've got some slow axes to make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I I bought myself a new axe here the other day, and then I went to town on the tree stumps that I had uh, laying around, and like got my axe stuck in the first one. Really had to work to get it out. <laughs> Tried the next one, no, and I realized, of course, I went with a. Uh, a universal axe, a bit heavier than the one I had, but I need a proper cleaver. And I'm not going to do a lot of woodworking. I mean, arborist or, I mean, chopping wood. Um, so I did not want to spend money on that. So I ended up uh, <laughs> bringing all the stumps with me uh, to the uh, well, the wise family and just used their electric uh like a wood cleaver or something, and I just made them into smaller bits and then brought them back home again to finish them off with the axe. <laughs> so I've been driving this. my firewood back and forth several times. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like when you Norwegians uh, catch fish and then ship it off to shine that I have it uh, cleaned out and then ships, ships it back and have it sold. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the place you um, you've just been and stopped so far looked gorgeous. I mean, it looked absolutely stunningly beautiful. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's it's my wife's aunt's husband. He he's from there, and of course, all his childhood friends are from there. And twenty years ago, 
um, the municipality just released that lot for uh, building cabins and they just got themselves a lot and built a cabin there because they're spending the summers there anyway and they, they sold the parents' house and just built a cabin there instead. And it is a view to die for. Yeah. And of course, on the edge of the... Like with the most beautiful view you can think, they have a hot tub. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the, we have been there now for several years in a row, and the kids are like, oh, we're going to the cabin with a hot tub. And I mean, you have to drag <laughs> them out of there to get them to eat or do anything. So, <laughs> I mean, just have a hot tub anywhere and they would be happy. But yeah, it's really nice. Take them out when they're pink and fully cooked through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tender to the bone. <laughs> well, it's, it's a kind of place that I would want one day, but of course, it's going to be after I know where the kids have settled down, because if you're going to get a cabin at some point and be able to be pensioners, I want it to be a place where people can come and visit and it's close by so we don't end up spending money now that we basically don't have to build a cabin and then in 20 years the kids move to the other part of the country and we sit there and we don't want to be alone at the cabin that's boring and then we have to move so <laughs> it's going to be a long-term project so then it's nice with family having cabins so you can just use them and yeah pay for food and drinks and then just bring your shit and leave. <laughs> yeah. They have the, the cabin rest okay. of the year and all the expenses and maintenance and so on. Yeah. Then you can come back next year. Ooh, it's still pretty. Yeah, yeah they've been to, working a lot. <laughs> you get to visit the different locations as well, don't you? Just using other people's. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Um, yeah. Of course, that's... It's so lodged in the Norwegian soul that you should have a cabin. Um but fewer and fewer people have it, but it, it's still like the mantra that you, you should have a cabin. Uh, but uh, we have some friends that moved here from Germany and they just rent a cabin every holiday. And they said, we can rent cabins for the rest of our lives for a quarter of the price of buying a cabin. And of course, if there's a beautiful place, you can just say, oh, can we rent it again next year and then the next year after that? But if we don't like it, then all right, we'll try a, another place. And that's brilliant. So, uh, I mean, buying now, and it's not a cabin anymore, people buying. It's it's a secondary house with yeah electricity <laughs> and water and all the bills and the maintenance and so on. So you actually have a separate house that you need to do maintenance and pay for, and you're using it every other weekend maybe in the high season and then yeah it's it's a money drain is it a swedish thing as well to get a cabin uh it's uh quite a lot lots of people have have them yes uh right. you, you usually have a cabin in the family at least someone has a cabin but, right yeah <laughs> but so, I, I mean somewhere. translated to english is it's a small red cabin um at least that's what we Norwegian associate Swedish cabins with. And I'm not sure if that is a thing still, or have you evolved as well as us that people are getting secondary full-blown houses? Or are you still a bit on it? It should be a, a simpler life uh, out in the woods. Uh... I think it's a, it's a combination of those because they tend to still be rather small. Uh, but you do have all the all the luxuries that you uh, people tend to want: uh, running water and electricity and all that sort of thing. Not not yeah. to go totally native on it, because that's the thing. I mean, it's it's still in a few cabins you have outhouses, but and someone just leave them for the aesthetics because it's tradition. And some municipalities now they don't allow outhouses in res residential areas but of course in some old areas where there are cabins it's allowed but if you're building new cabins and like section lots for cabins they don't allow you to do that they want you to have a proper septic tank and so on yeah and that got me thinking 
maybe I should just build an else house and just put it in the corner of our lot where we don't use for anything else but just to piss the neighbors off because if it looks like an outhouse they think that we're going to use it as that and i i can just use it as a shed to put a lawnmower in but it's <laughs> it have that uh traditional carved out heart in the door and you have a portrait of the king on the inside and so on and uh yeah <laughs> you just you go and sit there and have a beer every evening <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. neighbor like spending quite a lot of time in there <laughs> Well, he has weird. two kids, and he, he just wants a peace and quiet. <laughs> and then you do like uh, Colin Firth. I, I dig a tunnel from there and to my house, so it's just a separate exit. To... <laughs> <laughs> so you go in and you don't come out until yeah. the next night, <laughs> wearing the same clothes. <laughs> just hoping that someone is watching. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was some uh, somewhere in the yeah somewhere in Sweden where they they bought back the shelter from um, which they use for the uh, municipality. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, they built that in the in, during the Cold War, and then they sold it, and now they bought it back just to have it. And it was oh, yeah. just like in the movies, where it's just a it's just a small little shed in the middle of a field and then below it is a big bunker complex with oh, that's all the so cool. thing and it, it looks like i mean they they left it in like early 80s i think and no one has touched anything in there so it looks proper 70s looks as well and to have something like that would be uh, yeah you feel like a bond villain <laughs> i would love that oh that's awesome um while I worked at the, the Directorate for Cultural Heritage, of course, there really is a lot of sites ar around uh, the capital, or I mean, basically all over Norway, uh, which were operative under the Cold War, but has since been shut down. And, and one of these were operational up until recently uh, here in Oslo, and then they shut it down. And... It's been sitting for quite a few years, as you said, without anyone touching it. And now it's been preserved as a relic from the Cold War. But it's like, it's in the middle of a residential area and everyone who lives there know it's there, but it's, it's relatively inconspicuous. And then you just open the door and you go down and there's a huge bunker complex in the entire mountain under that hill where there now is a lot of residential areas. And it's like you have that James Bond. It's it's a big room with the the glass wall with all the maps on it, so you could just draw with whiteboard markers on the map, like. Um, <laughs> and they had like a big table with a map with all the like the pins you could move and so on, and all the phones with the twisted cords and different colors and. It's amazing. I mean, if I could buy one of those places for my workshop, and then I, I would keep all of it. I would find uses of mine. I mean, of course, it's a bit like, look, mom, no computer. I would just yeah. make those phones <laughs> work just to call internally or family members, just hotwire them. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it that uh, it was called EMF camp? I think they had in the UK just a couple of weeks ago. Where it's a big hacker camp, nerdy electronic stuff, and then they just camping out in the field, and then they actually run copper wires with a uh, old old phones, and that is what they have to use if you want to call a technical support or anything. And they also have fiber and two two thirty electrics to all the tents, so everyone they run their servers oh, wow. and that sort of thing because they're <laughs> geeks. But if you want to to contact a help desk or something, you have to use an old rotary phone. <laughs> That's I've proper nerves. That. <laughs> you know, I heard I, of that. They didn't, they didn't invite me. <laughs> I saw several years ago, I, I saw a YouTube video of a girl and she made a working rotary mobile phone. And I was like, oh, God damn it, please, someone just make that and I want it. And she made, I realized, I think this year that she made a Kickstarter and she got money and funding, but it's a bit slow progress, but 
there are now a few people that are working to actually make these for sale. I mean, it's it's going to be the simplest of phones, so yeah, you, you don't have much memory or functionality. It's basically just a 4G-based cellular phone, but to dial the number, you have the rotary part on front, but it looks awesome, and at some point, I'm probably going to have one, and then you have to memorize 10 <laughs> numbers of the people you call the most, and of course... Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the two The, the old two phone people, book yeah. is back. <laughs> yeah. The physical phone book. If anybody asks me my phone number, I have to get my business card out of my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a seldom I use my work phone, so I I almost know my work phone number. Almost. Yeah. Oh, but <laughs> I always have to check to be sure be sure. No, if I um, if I lost um my phone numbers, my contacts on my phone, I wouldn't know anybody's number. I would literally have to call the emergency services. Nine nine nine, because that's the only number I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we rely a bit too much on our phones, perhaps. I think there was an American company that were doing um, lower tech mobile phones, um, so they were, you could still have apps on it, but it would literally give you three or four of your most used apps, and it wouldn't give you the icons because it said they were distracting. So it just writes in words what the app is, <laughs> yeah. and it it just does text messages and calls out after that. No emails or anything from them. Oh, that was quite a nice idea for somebody who doesn't like mobile phones so much. I did actually look into that uh, at one time because I had an iPhone 4 and I, I really liked the size because I can hold it in one hand, I can reach the entire screen with my thumb and of course I lost it into an oil tank and that totally ruined <laughs> it. And then of course you could not buy it anymore because I have had it for four and a half years and everything just got bigger and I didn't want it. And then of course this Chinese company, they made smartphones that were really small, but they did not have the capability of having some of the apps that I needed because I realized that I, I still need the app for the tickets for the bus and so on. And you need a app for when I'm using my online bank, I use uh, Bank Idea, which is an app you use to gain access to your bank account. And there is a three or four of them who are essential for just working. I mean, if you're if you don't have them, you can't really pay at the bus or pay at anything. You have to bring cash with you, and not everyone takes cash anymore, so it's a hassle. Pay parking also is yeah. mobile apps nowadays. Am I going to have difficulty catching the train when I land in Norway <laughs> without an app? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> yes and no. Um, you go to, if you just walk into the carriage where um, there is a conductor, you can pay by card. So there is, there is ah, no problem. That's cool. So yeah. <laughs> just the thoughts of landing in Norway. Trying to download a Norwegian app. Yeah. Well, Glenn is arrested because he didn't yeah. pay the the <laughs> train ticket, he got, and that's he uh, got angry and smashed something. <laughs> yeah. And what he didn't know is in Norway they're really strict on the train fare, so if you don't pay up, it's a night in the brink. <laughs> October. That's not far away. No, it's really not. Yeah. Looking forward to yeah. it. Oh, well, we have all summer as well. Uh, should we start looking into what hotel we should book? Because I'm I'm into yes. uh, getting a hotel yeah. now. So uh... yeah, yeah, that we should actually. Yeah, it's, it's, the fa it's a family room at the Waldorf Astoria. Like uh, <laughs> I can bring my cassette tape. Like uh, I'll leave the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you book them, and I'll send you some money. How about? <laughs> Although you, you said they were expensive, the hotels I've I've looked at from this end don't seem too bad. So maybe we get a cheaper rate. <laughs> yeah, or, or I just realised that you you're used to uh, quite expensive hotels already in the UK. So uh, oh, okay. yeah, this is home territory for you. Right. <laughs> uh, might be so. Fair enough. Yeah, but no, it's just around the corner, really. I mean, summer's nearly over now. 
<laughs> yeah, man. Now we had two days of summer now, so that's about it. Yeah. And uh, of course, now it's just the obligatory weeks of uh, going and visiting family and so on. And then it's back to the grind, and then it's Scarpet Festival, yeah. and it's going to be nice. Yeah. Then Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then make a central. <laughs> Now, now it actually feels like proper summer because uh, it's been a Swedish tradition for, for I think forever now that uh, we we have midsummer murders g- shows on TV just after oh, midsummer okay. because midsummer is such a big thing in in Sweden. Right. <laughs> so that now it started actually tonight uh, or today was the uh, for this season uh, they published that. Uh, on Swedish TV, and uh, as a runner-up for that, they published the uh, first five seasons of it just two weeks ago. <laughs> so uh, this can... the English show, yeah, the English show, yeah. Some murders. We <laughs> we're uh, obsessed with it because it's. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, the the right amount of for the general anglophilia that most in Sweden have. <laughs> but I, I realized that it it paints you in a rather weird image because you really start to think that yeah, that's. How most British people are. I mean, a quarter of them are are murderers, and a quarter of them are adulterers, and a quarter of them are blackmailers, and the rest are cops. I mean, that's <laughs> that's probably that's how yeah, we are. Isn't it doesn't it? it doesn't show up any red flags moving to the village of, Re- of Midsummer where every other person's been murdered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big county, yeah. apparently. But yeah, it it gives you those uh, those nice. Uh, uh, English countryside vibes, and it's yeah. it's yeah. slow and nice. And I mean, sure, a lot of people are murdered, but <laughs> no one is running around and shooting guns all the time that in an American show style. So it's no, that's it's true. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's poisonings and yeah, it's more creative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they've killed people in all the ways possible. <laughs> yeah, so. It's the chap who played Bergerac that uh, is the chief inspector in that, isn't it? Which was another detective show. I do not know that one. I I remember Bergerac as a kid. Uh, In Norway, we had Derek, which was a German show, and then we had Bergerac. uh, And then, of course, Poirot came around. And I was too young. I just just remembered uh, the name, and then there was the car chases and some shootings and then of course i was told them i wasn't old enough to watch and then of course i was very much interested in it but yeah i've I've seen a few episodes as an adult because i found them on youtube and like this was crap (laughs) 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 okay that no i haven't seen that one but yeah uh your nettles uh hasn't been he hasn't been the lead in midsummer murders for a long time now Oh, I've not seen it for a long time. It's then. another Barnaby now. I think the new oh, one has okay. done more shows than the old one. <laughs> wow. Are they still making it? Yep. Jesus. Just for you Swedish people. I, I think, think. It, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> or the Scandinavians, because, yeah, these uh, crime shows, the British crime shows are a huge hit in Norway as well. Right. We can have them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, will. no, that's, a, that's how we view you. Yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> and of course, in, in Norway, we have every Easter, there is a crime show on every television channel. Um, and it's been a tradition since we only had one national television channel. And then it was the Easter crime. And it was always a British show. And a few years ago, I stumbled over Vera which is also a British crime show, but a bit newer. But I, I really like that show. So I watched a couple of seasons, one Easter, but uh, yeah, I haven't What's watched the rest. Sorry? Vera? Al- Alvi- Vera? Oh, Vera. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not watched that one either. No. <laughs> but there is something about the, uh, the English dark, uh, reserved kind of humor and like she as well there is some very well hidden sarcasm there and I, it really there is something there that strikes a chord with the Norwegian humor it's, a, it's probably <laughs> it's cold and wet I, it's probably for sh- shaped us in similar ways that we now bond over <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah something like that yeah it's been another <coughs> cold wet day today it's been rubbish 
It was nice yesterday. I think it rained over the weekend in parts. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready for some summer. We normally get a better summer than this. Although last year was shit as well. Yeah, people have been talking about it. It's like, all right, I would just we are now at least we are not in the middle of July. But we're getting close and it's it's been shitty. We had a nice May and it's been mm. one day here and there, but pissing down in between. So yeah, we haven't had a proper summer. And people are now like, Oh, we're not gonna have one this year. <laughs> Let's I, keep up on it. I think we're having a better one this year than last year, actually. So yeah, you seem to be doing no, really well. I'm not complaining. No. So. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I feel the resentment. Uh, so let's end this uh, half pint here before it gets it gets ugly. <laughs> Have a nice whatever you're having. <laughs> have a nice whatever. You're Please don't hate me. And, yeah, let's, I hope you have a better summer than us, both mentally and physically. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs>